Greater is he who is in us than he that is in this world. You know what that means? That means we have diplomatic immunity from all evil in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful. We're so thankful that we have diplomatic immunity from all evil in the name of your son, Jesus. Thank you for that, Father. Thank you for watching over us, for taking care of us, for rebuking the devourer for our sake. We believe we receive that, that heavenly divine protection and the angels of the Lord marshalling our borders and our boundaries. We believe we receive it. And Father, right now, by your precious Holy Spirit, help us breathe on the on your word in our heart and may it bring forth lasting fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. We're starting this brand new series, United. United Part 1. This is going to be, I believe, a whole new way of living for each one of us as we dial into God's truth on the, on the subject of being united. You've heard the famous saying, united we stand, divided we fall. There's no doubt that collaboration can be an unstoppable force in life. Henry Ford, the great industrialist, once said this, Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. The positive and negative charges of two hydrogen and one oxygen atom attract to each other. And then united, say that word united, they make up the water molecule. As you know, water is essential to life. After all, your body is made up of over 60% water. Yes, 60%. So yes, water is essential to life. And therefore, unity, unity is essential to life. Can you just imagine if hydrogen decided to stop playing nice with the oxygen in your body? <laughs> it would be a mess. Proper unity, good cohesion, produces life, blessing. The next time you enjoy a hot shower or a bath, just think, ah, unity is wonderful, wonderful. It takes real unity to have a strong marriage, a strong family, a successful business, unity, cohesion. I like this quote, as a family, we make, not take, time for each other. This is the key to a strong chain, even though some links don't touch. Did you get that? We make, not take. We make time. And you can be part of an amazing family without ever even touching some of the other links. But you can be part of a destructive coalition without ever touching, physically connecting. As we get deep into this wonderful series called United, we will discover that it's very important to know how to receive within your accord, your alliance. But receiving is not taking. Mother Teresa once said this, what can you do to promote world peace? Go home and love your family. To begin with, let's consider the power of being united by listening to this short story. It's the famous fable by the Greek storyteller Aesop called Four Oxen and the Lion. A lion used to prowl about a field in which four oxen used to dwell. Many a time he tried to attack them, but whenever he came near, they turned their tails to one another, so that whichever way he approached them, he was met by horns of one of them. At last, however, they fell a quarreling among themselves, and each one went off to pasture alone in a separate corner of the field. Then the lion attacked them one by one and soon made an end of all four. The moral of the story, of course, is this. There are life-giving, life-sustaining blessings in good coalitions, in being united. The other side of the coin is there are grave consequences to being divided. The truth is your enemy enjoys a delicious barbecue when you live divided instead of united. And you are the so-called guest of honor. It's kind of like inviting a Texas steer to a barbecue. He doesn't get to sit at the table. He's plated on the table. I'll have some barbecue sauce, please. 1 Peter 5, verses 8 and 9. 
Be sober, well-balanced, and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. But resist him. Be firm in your faith against his attack, rooted, established, immovable, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. You do not suffer alone. Now, first of all, who's the devil looking for? Someone alone, disconnected or out of unity. Would it surprise you to find out just a few verses earlier, we're instructed to humble ourselves? Secondly, what suffering are we referring to here? The enemy's attack? Sure, but it's more than all of that. All of us, along with brothers and sisters all over the world, must stand up to the same temptations that are tactics to divide us. We are an impervious force to the enemy when we stand united. But the moment we act like those silly oxen and give in to jealousy, suspicion, my opinion is better than your opinion, envy, comparisons, issues that are based on preferences and not principle, God's principle, we set ourselves up to suffer. Are you suffering today? I'm asking, are you suffering today? Whatever you do, don't let the enemy further isolate you by bringing you under condemnation. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus, so shake that stuff off so you can hear the truth right now. God wants you in his family, protected, surrounded, and united. If you're suffering in any way, this series called United is strategically just for you. Let me tell you straight up, God's kingdom is united but it's united around God's principles, not human opinion or preferences or even experiences. That's why in the family of God, people of all backgrounds, creeds, color, age, traditions, find themselves united in Christ. We are many people, but one voice, trusting in the Lord, it's our choice. We are many faces, but one tribe. Jesus is our King, and we live his life. It's a spiritual principle that nothing stands when divided. The enemy attack on your family, your life, our nation is intended to divide you away from his principles, God's principles and truth and integrity. Let me put it ultra simple for you. You cannot be truly fulfilled, joy filled, or even happy without good cohesion, connection, unity within the body. The late comedian George Burns, he once said this, happiness is having a large, loving, caring, close-knit family in another city. <laughs> ah, Georgie, Georgie. You see, all joking aside, we try to laugh at our inability to be united, even in families. Society has a habit of using self-deprecation to ease the pain of failing to be united. How many comedies have you watched that are based entirely on division, separation? Shows like Everyone Loves Raymond are about how divided and disunited the entire family is. The religious leaders 2,000 years ago tried to discredit Jesus by manufacturing a fake link between Jesus and the enemy. He had just cast an evil spirit out of some poor, broken person. And here's how the jealous mob responded. He drives out demons because he's in league with the demons, with Beelzebub, the prince of demons. Oh, really nice, isn't it? Really nice. So here's how Jesus responded to their false claim of him being in cohesion with the devil. Luke 11, starting at verse 17. But he, well aware of their thoughts and purpose, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is doomed to destruction, and a house divided against itself falls. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand and continue to survive? Even the CEO of all of hell and all evil, the devil, cannot survive or tolerate a divided kingdom. Successful CEOs in Fortune 500 companies have achieved extraordinary success just by eliminating the silo mentality that so subtly invades their organization's culture. It's impossible to be successful. 
No matter how much talent you have, no matter how good your product is, no matter how strong you are, if you stand alone or with the wrong partners. Life is a team sport, and the enemy of humanity is seeking those he can devour. 1 Peter 5. Silo thinking is stinking thinking. Why? Because it's isolated and there's no movement. Life needs movement and flow. Sameness is not unity. It's twisted thinking. Who wants two left-hand gloves? How about two right shoes? Do you put on pants with two left legs? That's weird. Look, look at football teams. They all have the same jersey on, but they're not the same, not the same position. They have different numbers, different identities on their back. They're different sizes for different talents and different positions and different strengths. Even the coaches on the sidelines are all different, specializing in different places, but they're united for success. What unites them as a team is not sameness, but alliance, team name, team mission, team goals. We are united under one name, the name of Jesus. Not our opinions about Jesus, but rather what the word of God says about Jesus being the king of kings and his mission here on earth. Yes, you have a sure identity in Christ as a child of God, the Father, with all his family benefits. And yes, you have a sure mission on Team Jesus to be united into his family, his ecclesia. That's where we get the English word church from, the Greek word ecclesia, which means governing body of envoys and ambassadors on assignment to represent the king's interests. You and I, we're on Team Jesus That's what unites us, not our proximity, but the name of Jesus. That's exciting. You have an amazing calling on your life, but it requires the family name and you being in, united to, not divided from the body of Christ, his governing body, his ecclesia, the church, not a building with a parking lot and a steeple on it. There's nothing wrong with that, but too often we've turned the true meaning of ecclesia into being united around organized Christian property management. Discipleship is extremely important, but if we as leaders are putting volunteers to work on a Sunday morning to basically operate a building called a church, let's be honest, that's not discipleship, right? I've had volunteers so busy serving, they're not receiving. They can't be growing and they're just giving out all the time. That's not sustainable, and it's not healthy or even God's plan. It's good to give, but you can only give what you have. You're called to be part of the king's ecclesia, and that requires true discipleship. Let's talk for a moment about core values of the king's team. It's an essential part of being united and being discipled. Core values are fundamental beliefs. It could be of a person, an organization, a nation, or a family. These are your principles and absolutes that guide your behavior, your decisions, and even your tolerances. For example, when a nation places great value on human life, they do whatever is possible to protect every life, making laws that align with those core values to protect all human life, regardless of who it is. But that core value also mandates an intolerance of behavior, actions, decisions to do harm to or endanger any life. Positive and negative charges, we'll call them. Cohesion. Maybe you're one of those extremists that won't tolerate livestock in your house, right? (laughs) It's what you tolerate. Core values steer results. They steer outcomes. Remember, when the oxen let go of the core values that once united them, a coalition in agreement, they steered toward their own destruction. The world says anything that makes you uncomfortable or challenges your opinion or bias must be eliminated from your sphere. So we run away, we isolate, or we join a weak, possibly even an evil coalition that welcomes sameness, devouring lions, smooth-talking, bias-confirming, barbecue-goers, and you're the main course. You do know that the rancher always feeds the steer before he turns it into a prime cup, 
right? You do know that. If you're feeding on confirmation instead of correction, you're not in the family. You're on the menu. Being united God's way in his kingdom, in the kingdom of God, it should attract good things, but it must also repel bad and evil things. The priority of being united should be a core value for every person on earth. We need each other. God himself said, it's not good for man to be alone. Other translations say, not profitable. Think of this. God spoke those words regarding Adam when Adam had full, unbroken relationship with God himself. So it wasn't that Adam was alone, but he didn't have another human, a different human type as a companion at that point in his life. Do you have a relationship with God, but yet you still feel alone? Psalm 68 verse 6 says, God places the solitary in family. God doesn't leave orphans or widows alone. He will not forsake you. Don't be hard on yourself. Say no to condemnation. You just haven't plugged in this core value yet, this wisdom that God provides you so that you can be united. The core value that sets you up to be united, God's way requires two important things, two important components. Number one, biblical parameters and boundaries. Simply put, the guidelines for wise association and assignment. This is your positive charge. Let's call that your positive charge. And then number two, an intolerance to all that's divisive. That's your healthy negative charge. Otherwise, there's no way of knowing if you're truly doing it correctly. How do you know if you've scored a goal if there isn't a net to measure your success? How do you know if you're in bounds or out of bounds if you don't have lines and markers? So how do you know if you're truly united according to God's good design if there aren't team rules, game rules defining success? And at the same time, guidelines for what you would need to be intolerant of or else you could find yourself being united or grafted into an evil coalition. Positive and negative charges for cohesion. The science of unity, right? There are people that proudly say they are humane, compassionate, tolerant souls, and yet in the same breath, they tolerate laws and ideology that remove protections, even kill the vulnerable and the innocent, unborn babies. Now, many don't see those dots connected that way because their core values are not connected with the straight edge of God's word. Hey, even I can throw a basketball in the air and score a basket every time as long as there's no basket to measure my success. We can easily fool ourselves into thinking we're moral when we remove the standard, the biblical standard for morality, subjective morality. What a convenience. What a confirmation. The problem is there's no true life measurement for it. It's like Robert De Niro screaming in downtown New York City. A lot of noise, but sadly, there's no life. Now, that reminds me of a story in the Bible about the Tower of Babel. Genesis 11, starting at verse 1. Now, the whole earth spoke one language and used the same words. And as the people journeyed eastward, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they settled there. They said one to another, come, let us make bricks and fire them thoroughly. So they used brick for stone and they used tar for mortar. They said, come, let us build a city for ourselves and a tower whose top will reach into the heavens and let us make a famous name for ourselves so that we will not be scattered into separate groups and be dispersed over the surface of the entire earth as the Lord instructed. Now the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And now nothing they have imagined they can do will be impossible for them. Come, let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, go down and there confuse and mix up their language so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the surface of the entire earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore, the name of the city was Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the entire earth, and from that place the Lord scattered and dispersed them over the surface 
of all the earth. We're going to come back to Genesis' story throughout this series. There's so much to learn here and to intentionally unlearn from God's wisdom in this powerful anecdote. I want to land part one of United with three powerful conclusions from the story of the Tower of Babel. Number one, united with good produces good. Pretty simple, right? United with good produces good. United as one people with one language and one plan, make it so nothing is impossible to you. That's what God said. Dr. Henry Cloud said this in his book, Boundaries for Leaders. Values make it possible for a guiding language to develop that gives structure and identity to the boundaries of behavior we want to encourage and prohibit. The people of this story had a guiding language that helped them unite around an evil plan, a godless plan. So when you're united around wrong or evil core values, your outcome will be unlimited wrong and unlimited evil. But if you are united around the guiding language of God's word, you attract the outcome of unlimited. Nothing is impossible. Good, blessing, benefit, protection, joy. What language are you being united around? Is the culture leading you or is the Bible your standard? Then number two, united with bad produces bad. United with wrong people produces dark unity. Yes, even evil unity. Wrong associations lead to the wrong language, lead to godless plans, produce a harvest of pain, destruction, loss. Much suffering comes upon you. The German people in the 1930s and 40s justified extreme amoral compromise of life for a leader, language, and a plan that united them under an ideology based on for the greater good. You can hijack basic personal freedoms by a seek first the greater good kind of unity. It's wrong. It's sin. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. Who are the people in your life you find yourself united with? Do they seek first God's kingdom? Or do they seek first their own opinion? Do they have their own version or subjective kind of morality? Let me give you a side note here. This challenge can manifest in families because this is why Jesus came, to give us all his name. He gave us a family blood transfer. You cannot save your loved ones by staying united to crazy or bankrupting your values to accommodate family sin. Number three, separation can be God's mercy. Being or feeling scattered could be God's mercy moving you out of wrong alliances. Consequences can shock you out of wrong thinking, which can introduce intolerance or bad patterns and behaviors. And now you find yourself energized to move into the right agreements, strong coalitions based on right language, the language of faith. In 2 Peter 2 verse 8, it says that Lot, Abraham's nephew, tortured his own soul brought great pain upon himself by living with wrong associations and relationships in the wrong place. My dear friend, there are wrong relationships for you and yes, wrong places for you to be. Are you in an alliance right now that is inviting a scattering? Is it better to hurt for a moment or suffer harm for a lifetime, an eternity? I know a family that redefined truth and moved away from biblical core values in order to accommodate their son's immoral choices. The end was tragic because the family ended up disintegrating and scattering like the dust in the wind. Life is not sustainable, united to lies or divided from the truth. What you compromise to keep, you will eventually lose, even life itself. Your top priority to God and to us God put it on our heart to help you to be united into one people, that's God's family, speaking one language, that's God's word producing faith, all in one plan, God's amazing will for your life, for your home, for your family, for your health. Here at Living Room Church, magnifying and worshiping God is our joy. And to encourage and strengthen and to cover you is our mission. Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 19, he said, go and make disciples of all nations, cultures, and people. 
Living Room Church has a simple assignment to help you and encourage you to cover and disciple you, to see you united into God's way of life. How do we do that? We prioritize attendance to God's word. That's the only way any of us can ever live life strong. At Living Room Church, our mission is identical to the simple Bible process that we lead you in. Receive God's love, grow in God's love, and give God's love. Have you ever seen an apple tree fulfill its destiny without first receiving rain, nitrogen, nutrients, sunlight? Fruit is the outcome of receiving and then growing. You can't give what you don't have. Our passion is spiritually to cover you, to bring value to your true identity, and encourage you in God's great plans for your life. We're on assignment to help you reach your highest potential in Christ Jesus. You might be thinking, well, where do I start, Stephen? My life feels like it's been scattered and even shattered in so many ways. People see me on the outside and they don't have a clue to the pain that I feel on the inside. You start right here, right now. I mean this very second by turning to Jesus. You're so loved, my friend. Matthew 11, verse 28, Jesus said this. He said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. My dear friend, you've been carrying the weights of life for far too long. United with God and his strength makes you strong. Let go of all the burdens and let Jesus carry what you can't any longer. Let Jesus fix, repair, heal all of your brokenness. Let him cover you in all those areas that you're so ashamed of. How do you do that? You use your delegated authority to activate a spiritual transfer. You make Jesus the Lord of your life by believing with your heart and then confessing with your words. You lay all your burdens down by trusting in him and it becomes a legal transfer by what you say, what you speak out loud. Just like our modern day courts accept anything you say in faith is evidence used for you and not against you. Pray this with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I need you to unite my heart. I need you to piece me together again. I've lived life too long broken. You died on the cross for me. God raised you up from the grave. I believe in you. Forgive me for all my sins. I turn now. I change directions. I begin a new life today. Here's all my burdens, the heavy weights I can't bear. Into your hands, Jesus, I give you my life. You're my Lord and Savior. In your name I pray. That's the family name. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.